what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the Kados Vim 1S single board computer now this is on the market not to replace the Raspberry Pi but as you know it's really hard to get your hands on a Pi right now so this could be a great option as just an alternative for now it's actually really affordable when you compare it to other boards on the market right now. This is coming in at $60, and there's already a lot of accessories available for this because it does utilize the same form factor as the uh, Kados Vim boards. So there's already cases, add-ons, and hats available that'll fit directly on this SBC. And going into this, I was a bit skeptical on what kind of performance we're going to see out of this board, but by the end of this video, hopefully you get an idea of what this thing can do. And I'll tell you, it actually exceeded my expectations given the specs we're working with here on this single board computer. And just to give you an idea of what comes in the box, basically we get the board and a Wi-Fi antenna. Give you a quick size comparison between the Vim 1S and the Raspberry Pi 4. The Vim 1S is actually coming in a bit smaller, but it is lacking some of the I.O. ports that the Raspberry Pi 4 has. I've always liked the way that Kados has laid their boards out. It's definitely a lot different from others on the market right now. And this does come with eMMC storage and Wi-Fi 5 built into the board. So we don't have to worry about adding adapters or even using an SD card, but you could if you wanted to. Taking a look at the I.O., starting from the top left-hand corner, we've got one USB 2.0 port. We've also got our Ethernet port, HDMI, which is HDMI 2.1. It will do 4K 60 out. USB Type-C, this is for power in and it runs on 5 volts. And we've got another USB 2.0 port. We've also got that PWM fan header, reset button, function button, and our power button. An RTC header in case you wanted to add a real-time clock battery. 40-pin GPIO right there, kind of laid out just like the Raspberry Pi. A two-channel infrared sensor, so if you wanted to add one of their remotes or a remote that can be programmed, you can always do it here. Moving around to the bottom, we've got our VIN input, and this is really for adding a battery to a board like this. We've also got a micro SD card slot, and this will support UHS one speed cards. So it'll do up to 47 megabytes a second. Now I really do wish that one of these USB ports up here was 3.0, but you know, I can get by with the operating systems that I'm gonna be running on this board here. And since this is using the Kados Vim layout, we do have access to a cooler, which this is definitely going to be a bit overkill for this board, but they do offer it over on their website. It fits several of their Vim boards. Goes right here. We've got the PWM fan. It can be controlled from software. And this board also fits in the cases they make for their Vim series. You can pick these up for pretty cheap. I think there are a couple aftermarket cases on the market also. But yeah, if you wanted to keep this thing nice and protected, you could use one of these. Access to all of the ports on the Vim 1S. Checking out the specs here, for the CPU, we've got the S905Y4. This is a quad-core Cortex-A35 CPU running at 2 GHz, and it is truly running at 2 GHz. We'll take a look at that when we get into the operating system. And by the way, this chip does support AV1. For the GPU, we've got the Mali-G31 MP2 running at up to 850 MHz. They've only added 2 GB of LP DDR4 RAM to the Vim 1S, and this really does show when we're trying to run a desktop operating system. They do have an Ubuntu image with GNOME, and I do notice that it does get a bit sluggish once I have a few apps open, and it's really because we're using up all of that RAM. But with their Android and their server image, really haven't noticed an issue with it. Would have been nice to have 4 gigs, but this is what we have with the Vim 1S. It's also got 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage, built-in Wi-Fi 5. It'll support a UHS-1 SD card from that slot on the bottom. And we've got a few operating system choices right now. There's Core Elect, there's an Ubuntu server, Ubuntu desktop with GNOME, and Android 11. And in order to install any of these operating systems, they actually make it really easy because these new Kados boards have a built-in operating system downloader. We can get online using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. We're going to boot into it right now, and it's called Uwow. So this is actually really neat. You can connect over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And basically what this is going to do is scan Kadas's servers for new images or firmware or operating systems, whatever you want to call them, for the specific board you're using. So obviously this is working on the Vim 1S. When I hit continue, you'll see that we do have an internet connection. And now it's going to give us a list of all of the operating systems that we can install. We've got Android, Core Elect. We've got Ubuntu server and Ubuntu with GNOME. So you can run a full desktop. But like I mentioned, we've only got two gigs of RAM here. Android is probably going to be your best bet if you want an operating system to mess around with. If you're looking to create a small server, obviously you could go with Ubuntu Server, or if you just want a media playback device, Core Elect is really awesome. But for this video, we're going to go with Android, and we do have a few to choose from. I'm going to go with the latest one, 
I can go ahead and download it right now and it's automatically going to flash it to the eMMC or SD card. Just makes it really easy to install a new operating system or even update your existing operating system on the SD or eMMC. All right, so here we are with the latest version of Android 11 for the Vim 1S. Uh, we do have access to Google Play. This is really awesome. Last time I checked out one of these CADAS boards, we didn't have access, but I think with all of their newer images, they are including it. But of course, if you're not into using the Google apps, you can always sideload a third-party market if you want to. Not a problem to do that. We can do it from internal storage, SD card, or even USB. Heading over to settings, we do have some dedicated CADAS settings here, specifically for these boards. We've got display and sound, and from here we can rotate the screen. We can actually change the resolution from here if you want to, and set up HDMI sec. So it's up to you if you want to use a remote like that. Power key definition. LED controls, so we can have the LEDs completely off, or we can even change the colors of them. And we've also got cooling fan control. Mine's set to automatic, but you can go full blast if you want to. And I'll tell you, these little Kadas fans at full blast do make a little bit of a whine noise. Automatic, not bad at all, especially on the S905Y4. It doesn't require too much cooling. When we open up IDA64, you can see that this Amlogic CPU does clock up to 2 GHz. Now, I've seen in some cases with these Amlogic CPUs, they're advertised as 2 GHz, and sometimes they only clock up to 1.5 or 1.8, but we are getting that full boost here, so we can get the maximum performance out of this little chip. And I'll tell you, when it comes to performance, you're not going to be able to run PS2 on this, you're not going to be able to run GameCube, but uh, when it comes to, like, N64, PSP, and Dreamcast, it actually does a really good job. 4K video playback is also phenomenal on this new firmware they have here. Really impressed by how it performs. And I've had some really good luck with native Android games also. And like I mentioned, we are going to be a bit limited here running a full desktop Linux variant on this board because we only have 2 gigabytes of RAM. I really wish they would have went with 4, but I know they wanted to keep the price as low as possible, and I understand. But with Android, even 2 gigs with a lot of the stuff that I've tested hasn't presented an issue whatsoever. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show off was a little bit of 4K video playback, and there's one weird little issue here. I'll find a demo and show you. As soon as I click on this, screen flashes black for just a second, but it goes right into the video. Got our drop frames listed right here. Had a little hiccup there with 11 drop frames, but so far, not bad. When it comes to 4K video playback on these S905 chips, this is definitely some of the best performance that I've seen, and I'm going to kind of chalk it up to newer drivers with, uh, you know, updated firmware and things like that. But it's always been touted as a CPU that can run 4K60 video quite well. And that's been the case with some of the other devices that I've tested, but it's usually not great with streaming 4K video, but here it's looking great. Next thing I wanted to test out was some native Android gaming, and we're starting off light here with Minecraft. I dropped the chunks down to 8, and we have fancy graphics off. I'm using an Xbox controller right now, and Minecraft for Android is one of those games that supports controllers really well. So yeah, I mean, if you wanted to play Minecraft on this, you could definitely do it. Here's Asphalt 9, and we do get a few stutters here and there, but, you know, even seeing this game, you know, booting up on this chip is still pretty impressive. Usually I test out Real Racing 3, and that's one of those games that does work well on the S905. Never had great luck with Asphalt until now. And finally, for the native Android gaming part of the video, we've got Dead Cells. I know it's a 2D game, but this is one of those games that really does struggle on lower-end chips. We're not at 60 FPS, we're actually set to 30, but it's still a really enjoyable experience. And again, this is one of those games that does perform well with a controller. Now it's time to move over to my favorite part of these videos, emulation testing. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this isn't going to run GameCube and it's not going to run PS2, so don't get your hopes up. But for some easier to emulate stuff, it does a great job. Here's GoldenEye007, and I'm using the Moopin 64FZ standalone app from Google Play. This is actually performing much better than I thought it would on this little board. Next up, we've got some Dreamcast emulation using the ReDream emulator. I did try a little bit of upscaling, and with some of the easier to run games you can, but I would kind of leave it at native, especially with a game like Sonic Adventure 2. But at native Dreamcast resolutions, we're running at 60. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner. 
So we've got a lot of retro systems that we can run at full speed on this board, but the most impressive thing that I saw so far was the PSP emulation. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP. This is Tekken 6, it's kind of a mid-range game. Not super easy to emulate, but it's not the hardest for PSP. We're at 60, native resolution, Vulcan back in. I could definitely play this and not have an issue with it. But of course, there is one kind of go-to game that we definitely need to test here, and that's gonna be God of War Chains of Olympus. So with this, we're using the Vulcan back in, 1x resolution, and I do have the speed hacks turned on from the standalone version of PPSSPP. But if you take a look at the FPS up in the top right hand corner, this is running at 60. Every once in a while I do get a couple dips when there's lots of particles on screen, but when it comes down to it, I've never been able to run this game at full speed with no frame skip on an S905 chip until now. Really impressed. So obviously, the Vim 1S isn't a high-end board by any means. If you're looking for a high-end board, I would go with something with an RK3588. Those are going to range from, you know, $120 up to $250, depending on where you get them. And yeah, I mean, you can even run PS2 games on that and run it as a full-fledged desktop PC, but it's going to cost you a lot more than the Vim 1S does. This is really put on the market as a cheaper alternative to some of the other stuff that's out there. And, you know, time where it's really hard to get your hands on a Raspberry Pi 4 for a decent price, this could come in handy for a lot of people. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Kados Vim 1S, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this board, just let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.